Amen. Let's give Jesus a praise. Come on. Clap your hands. Give God a good praise. Hallelujah. We're grateful. Hallelujah. We're thankful. We love him. We adore him. We magnify him. We give his name glory on and praise while you're clapping. Let's clap our hands for Overseer Johnson. My God, hallelujah, doing a wonderful job. Amen to his lovely wife. Come on, clap your hands for her. Amen to, amen, all of the preachers, amen, and pastors and elders in the house of God. Amen to the saints and friends. Amen. You may be seated. Presence of the Lord. Amen. We're honored to be here on this, the Lord's day. Amen. For we are believing by faith. Amen. That it's not over yet. Amen. Our Bishop Haywood preached the other day and said he's still got time. And I'm a firm believer that even in this late hour of the day, God can still show up. Amen. With what we need. And we're excited tonight about being here on this, the Lord's night. Amen. We were scheduled. Amen. To leave out of town earlier this week. Amen. But at the request of our overseer, we stayed over. Amen. A little while longer. Amen. That we might. Amen. Be a blessing. Amen to the house. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice? Amen. Who can feel the power of God? He's moving in the atmosphere. He's moving in our midst. Amen. He's turning things around and it's working out for our good. Just tell your neighbor, it's working out for your good. It's working out for your good. Sometime when we go through things, we're not sure how it's going to work out. We're not even sure how God is going to work this out for us. But just encourage your neighbor and say, it's working out for your good. I have one verse, amen, to read in your hearing today. Joshua chapter number 5. Joshua chapter number five. We're in a very interesting hour of the church. Amen. But I'm a firm believer that God will move by his power divine for us. I am excited. Amen. To be standing in the sanctuary. Amen. Of evolution. Amen. I am excited. Amen. And how this church has come into fruition. Amen. And moving forth. Amen. With the spirit of excellence. Come on. Give yourselves a hand for excellence. Amen for excellence is, amen, the way of the kingdom. Amen, excellence is the way of God. Genesis chapter number five, Joshua, I'm sorry, chapter number five. I want to thank God for all of those who are watching me virtually. Amen, on this the Lord's day. Amen, God's choice blessings. Amen, be upon your lives. Amen, there were many more of you. Amen, that were on. And I would ask again that you would text your post and invite Amen. And induce the uh, viewership, amen, of this particular live on tonight. For I am a firm believer that there is a word from the Lord, a word that will come to shift us, amen, and to take us, amen, where we need to be. And in this we give God praise. Joshua chapter number five tonight. Joshua chapter number five tonight. Joshua chapter number five tonight. While you're getting that, amen, to the young man that's playing the organ amen just as you came in to play one instrument amen and god shifted you to play something else god's getting ready to shift the direction of your season and although you were uh intending on heading in one direction with one vein of things lined up god said i'm getting ready to move for you in a whole nother direction because where you were getting ready to go there was a plot in a scheme set up to derail you but God said, I'm getting ready to reroute you. Have you ever been using a GPS and you missed your turn and it said rerouting? Amen. And God said, I'm getting ready to reroute you that the plan the enemy had for you would not be able to find you. God, I thank you because in this season, he desires to prosper you. This is going to be the season of your life where everything works out for you. Somebody say everything. Everything is getting ready to work out for you. You're going to work out for your good. And then even the good, the bad, and the ugly, it's all getting ready to work together. Somebody clap their hands for the men of God. Hallelujah. Joshua chapter number five. Amen. Joshua chapter number five. Amen. I am excited. Amen. To be here on this the Lord's day. Amen. For I'm a firm believer. Amen. That before we leave this place. Amen. God would have blessed us. God would have blessed us. There's a miracle waiting. Amen. In our benediction. There's a miracle awaiting us in our benediction benediction means not the end of the service but final blessing 
I'm a firm believer that there's about eight of you under the sound of my voice uh, after all the hell you've been through. Somebody holler, I'm about to get a final blessing. Hallelujah. I've seen warfare. Many sleepless nights and lonely days. But tell your neighbor, my benediction is coming. There is a final blessing. There is a final blessing. Oh, Lord, I'm about those who tired. Because I endure to the end. Somebody had a finally. God's going to bless me. Hallelujah. It was Jacob who was wrestling all night long. But round about the break of a brand new day, that which he was struggling with gave him a final blessing. Changed his name and the name of the place he wrestled. That he and his family would never be the same again. Amen. Joshua chapter number five. Joshua chapter number five. Amen. In verse number one. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, and it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. Let me read that again. And it came to pass when all the kings of the Amorites, which were on the side of Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites, which were by the sea, heard that the Lord had dried up the waters of Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their heart melted, neither was their spirit in them anymore because of the children of Israel. For a few moments, beloved of God, I want to minister from the topic, the rumor that made me win the rumor that made me win father crucify your flesh you get the glory out of this we thank you for your anointing to preach this word and we're asking now god that you give them an ear to hear a heart to believe a mind to understand even a life to exemplify the word that shall be declared tonight and we thank you god for even those who may tiptoe in in the later part of this message they will get in where they need to fit in we thank you for your anointing in this house. Your presence is here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. The rumor that made me win. And I've come to tell about six of you tonight um, that people have been keeping track of you. They have been monitoring your movements and they have been gauging uh, both your progress and setbacks uh, because the word is out uh, that you're going to make it. Will you do me a favor and just tell somebody the word is out about you. The word is out about you. Somebody knows that you're going to make it. Somebody knows that you're going to come out of it. Uh, and guess what? And they don't like it. Uh, and so it is before we can even dive into Joshua chapter number five, we got to deal with the drama that was in Genesis. It starts with a, a very dysfunctional family that God said, I will call my own. I've come to tell about eight of you that God is not looking for the Brady Bunch or the Cosbys. God is looking for somebody like you, looking for David, who was ultimately the black sheep of the family, but became the shepherd of the family and ultimately the king over Israel. God is looking for someone who doesn't have it all together like a man by the name of Moses, who was born of a woman who could not even raise her as his son or as her son but instead he had to be raised by the daughter of Pharaoh God is looking for somebody who the world would deem as an underdog the world would say God that you would amount to nothing and be nobody God just touch yourself and say God's looking for me he's looking for me and so the Bible declares it here now there was a dream by the name of Joseph. Not only was Joseph a dreamer, 
He had the ability to interpret dreams. The Bible declares uh, there was one dream that he had that offended his family. And in this dream, uh, he saw his family bowing before him. Can I tell you this? Uh, that is one thing that would offend people around you uh, is when you think you're better than them. I ain't got nobody here. Uh, God, it amazes me uh, that midgets, uh, uh, God, will try to intimidate giants. Uh, but don't minimize yourself. Don't water yourself down. Now, uh, God, neither downplay yourself to make people comfortable with you, uh, but force them to level up to who you are and where you're going. Uh, and so when Joseph began to dream that his father and brothers uh, would one day bow to him, both Joseph's father and brothers uh, uh, got offended. Can I tell you something? Somebody, uh, precious heart, is offended by your potential, and they're calling you uh, problematic. They're calling you, uh, uh, God, saying you doing too much and you think of too much of yourself and the reality of it is uh, I thank God I got my self esteem back uh, I'm no longer away from no one to validate me uh, say I'm cute say I'm pretty uh, I fell in love with myself uh, when the world left me all by myself and from that uh, uh, day forward uh, I made up in my mind before I let anyone else love me uh, I'm going to love myself look at your name and say it's time to love yourself here is the interesting thing. I was doing my studies, and it wasn't until I studied uh, uh, Gideon that I realized something. Uh, uh, when Joseph's brothers uh, went to get rid of him, the Bible declares that they sold him out uh, to the Egyptians. That's not 100% true. I got to deal with that tonight. Uh, they gave him, uh, uh, God, uh, to the Moabites now. Uh, the Moabites were actually uh, the cousins of uh, of Joseph. Uh, it amazes me uh, uh, God, that most of us are not sold out by friends. Uh, we're sold out by our family. I ain't got nobody here. The same ones that got the same last name as you uh, uh, stem from the same family tree as you uh, come from the same bloodline. Y'all got the same mother and or father. Those are the ones uh, that'll sell you out. Uh, uh, God, those are the ones that'll stab you in the back talking about who did it. I uh, uh, got those are the ones, beloved of God, uh, who will try to disqualify you uh, from your future by bringing up your past. Uh, uh, God, those are the ones, beloved of God, uh, who are never happy for you, but always talking about you privately. Good God. Uh, the Bible declares that the Moabites sold him into the hands uh, of the Egyptians, but uh, because uh, he had an anointing on his life, uh, and because he had a gift in operation, uh, no matter where he landed in Egypt, where the people or palace or prison he was destined to prosper I've come to tell as many of you that would receive it both listening and watching God that no matter where you end up in life you gonna win would you do me a favor and tell somebody you gonna win wherever you go come on here whether you in food lying God or at the ATM at Bank of America you gonna win whether you at CVS or Walgreens you gonna win whether you're standing online in the post office uh, waiting for your mail uh, you gonna win uh, God, whether you're at work or working from home uh, somebody holler I am a winner uh, God, the Bible declares, beloved of God, uh, that here now Joseph, uh, uh, God, he's winning now. Uh, God, God gives him a family. I uh, uh, got two sons, uh, one by the name of Manasseh and one by the name of Ephraim. I uh, uh, got, but God will not rest until he's reunited uh, with his family. Uh, there are some people you lost uh, along the way, and there are some people, uh, hey God, uh, who you had to put to the side. Uh, but I've come to tell you when you get on top uh, God will reunite you. Uh, I got to tell your neighbor there's a reunion when you get on top. Uh, I got all those uh, who treated you wrong uh, and treated you dirty. Uh, all those who lied on you and scandalized your name. Uh, God will make a way uh, for y'all to come back together uh, uh, when you get on top. Uh, tell your neighbor uh, Whatever you do, make sure you make it to the top. Don't die in loaded bar. And don't give up in the pit. But beloved of God, make sure you make it. You make it on top. Tell, tell your
your neighbor I'm on my way back on top I may have fallen off in a season but I'm on my way back on top I'm on my way back into my winning season I five your neighbor say I'm on my way Tell somebody I'm on my way, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. And so, watch this. Egypt served as our processing season. You must understand that once Joseph and the family was reunited up in Egypt, God made them move out of Canaan up into Egypt. Can I tell you something? There's no way in the world, y'all better hear this, uh, there's no way in the world that God will allow your enemy to prosper in this season. Oh God, uh, let me say it again. There's no way in the world that God would allow your enemies uh, to prosper in this season. Many of you have people uh, who think they got away. It looked like they got away. Uh, but tell your neighbor, nobody gets away. Uh, I got, I used to like a piece of candy called now or later. Uh, let me give you that prophecy. Now or later, they going to get uh, what they deserve. Uh, I got to look at your neighbor and say, they going to get it. They going to get it. They going to get it. Uh, every word they said about you and Waffle House in the back boot. Everything they said about you at Denny's around the table. I got they gonna pay for it. For the Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also. Watch this overseer. The Bible declares that him now, beloved of God, a good God. God, God makes a way now. God, the Assyrians come in and they take siege of Egypt. When they take siege of Egypt, the new Pharaoh does not honor the covenant between Joseph and the old Pharaoh. Joseph dies, Pharaoh dies. Can I tell you this? Sometime, good God, um, old favor has to die for a new move to come. I ain't got nobody here. Sometime God has to make you uncomfortable where you was comfortable uh, just to shift you out of comfortability. And so the Bible declares here, beloved of God, that here now, uh, uh, God, uh, Joseph died, Pharaoh dies, a new Pharaoh arises who's not Egyptian. Um, he's actually a Syrian. Now, and he says to them, uh, God, we are intimidated, uh, watch this, uh, by revolution. I want y'all to hear this. Uh, uh, God, there is an intimidation in the land uh, concerning this ministry. Uh, it don't matter how many is or is not here, is or is not a part. Uh, uh, God, there are people that you think that's greater than you, uh, that's intimidated by you uh, because they know that God is with you. Good God, I just said something. Uh, uh, God, because many people are gathering, but God is not there. I got many people been around but God already exited the building I got but somebody holler God is with us somebody holler God is with us how do I know that God is with us I felt him when I pulled up in front of the building when I came through the door I felt the presence of God when I sat in my seat I received my breakthrough is there anybody here that would say God God is with us I said she so now, here's the crazy thing is, this is prophetic, so I need y'all to walk with me. When we came into Egypt, we came in as a family. Mm -hmm. But when we leave out of Egypt, we leave it out of nation. Can I tell you this? Uh, your Egypt season was not meant to diminish you. Uh, it was meant to shift you and change your status. Uh, that you would have the testimony, I'm coming out of this greater than I was uh, when I first went in. I ain't got nobody here. When we first came in, we were 12 families, 12 tribes. Uh, when we come out of this, we're the nation of Israel. Uh, we are prevailers that got power with God. Uh, we are people that will never be defeated, good God. Uh, we are folks that will never give up. Come on here. We are folks that will wrestle until change comes. I got to tell your neighbor, there's still a fighter on the inside of me. I got, I might not be fighting on the block anymore, but I got to fight in the spirit. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality. I'm no longer mad about who said it. I'm mad about the spirit that they allowed to use it. 
and now I learned how to move in a strong wind of deliverance. Bind up the devil and cast the devil out. Grab your neighbor, say, bind up. Bind up the devil and cast the devil out. And so I heard that the more they afflicted him, the more they multiply and they grew. Is there anybody here that can declare and decree the hell I went through made me more mature? The problems I dealt with made me more spiritual. The pain I felt made me pray hard. The tribulation induced my praise. It was good that I was afflicted. I learned how to worship God. I learned how to serve the Lord. I learned how to go to God in prayer. I learned how to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not to my own understanding more importantly beloved I learned how to wait tell your neighbor I've been waiting but I'm getting ready to get what I've been waiting on I'm getting ready to receive what I've been pulling for. I'm getting ready to see what I've been praying for. I'm getting ready to have what God promised me. Tell somebody it's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. All right. All right. Is here. And so after 400 years of being processed, after 400 years of God growing us, uh, God, it came time for the devil to release us. I came to prophesy to about eight of you that will receive this. Uh, you ain't going to struggle every day of your life. Uh, you ain't going to go through for the rest of your life. Uh, sooner or later, what's been fighting you uh, is either going to have to work with you uh, or loose you and let you go. Uh, I got to tell your neighbor, say neighbor, uh, your problems got to turn you loose. Uh, your trouble got to let you go. Uh, the devil got to drop his weapon. Uh, drop his weapon and flee because I've been resisting him and the Bible declares resist the devil and he will flee and give him no attention and give him no shine and give him no credit but all the glory belongs to God and I promise the Lord that I'll give him the glory in the good times and in the bad I'm going to give him the glory where well, they're happy happy old Sam I've got to praise yeah yes good God I got a praise. And so the Bible declares he raised up a man by the name of V. E. Johnson. I'm out of here, y'all. Raised him up to bring us out. I know you were comfortable in what you were in. And you were content with failing every day. But raised up a young man and said, Tell. Pharaoh let my people go they've they've been hurting they've been crying they've been wounded I seen their tears I felt their pain and I know Yes, I do. I know their sorrow. Well, beloved of God, the Bible declared God parted the Red Sea. He made a way when there was no way. He opened a door that was shut in our face. He made a way and I heard and I heard and I heard when he made a way the rumors started my cousins and them the ones that lied on me sold me out spread all the rumors and all the gossip when they heard what God 
technology they lost their strength to fight because they knew that God was with us I came all the way from New, New Jersey to tell somebody in evolution that the world is out about you you survive the worst get ready for the best for the latter ray shall be greater than the former ray And so, when, they, when God allowed us to make it out of Egypt, the rumor hit Rahab's house that when Joshua and some spies came into oh God, Jericho, Rahab was a harlot. She was a woman of the evening. Oh God. She was an around the way girl. Y'all read in between the lines on that. The Bible declares that Joshua and them pulls up to Rahab's house. Uh, God, they wasn't coming. Ooh, that bando should have been here. But what everybody else was coming for, they was coming to hear what the town was saying. What qualified Rahab to bring forth this message was. Anybody, oh God, we got a few, we got a few adults in here. Anybody who knows about pillow talk is. I got most men will share their heart. I ain't got nobody here. Laying their head on a pillow. Y'all don't believe that. Let me tell you about Samson. I ain't got nobody here. Samson messed around and got Zeke. I ain't got nobody here. Never got nothing from Delilah. I ain't got nobody. She ain't never gave it up. But playing in his head, I ain't got nobody here. While his head was laying on a pillow in her lap, he told his secrets. Can I tell you this? Don't let no one stroke your emotions. That you lose your secrets. You got to learn how to keep your mouth shut. Overseer Johnson in this season, we got to learn how to Speak less and listen more. I ain't got nobody here. Because if you listen to people, they'll tell you the contents of their heart. I ain't got nobody. Now, if my uncle was here, you know, he's an alcoholic. Uh, he would tell you that, you know, a little liquor will loosen up the tongue. I ain't got nobody here. Because a drunk, good God, a drunk man will tell his heart. I ain't got nobody here. As a sober man will tell a lie. Y'all not ready for that kind of talk. Uh, Oh, God, uh, sometimes you gotta let people get drunk on their own ego. I ain't got nobody here. I gotta get drunk on their own self. If they share their heart and they'll tell you how they feel about you. I got it ain't gonna be alcohol. I got just stroke their ego a little bit. And they'll tell you what they really think about you. But here is where I get excited tonight. No matter what they think about me, I know about myself anything they think is what they heard but what I know is what it is and I know without a shadow of a doubt that God is with us I gotta get out of here and so watch this here when they got to Rahab's house she said, listen, the word is already out about y'all. We already heard how God let y'all escape the scandal. I ain't got nobody here. Now, you got to understand something here. Sometimes God will use rumors and scandals to make us popular. Okay, they don't believe that. They don't believe that. I got to give them Bible on that because they don't believe that. Y'all remember a man by the name of Lazarus, don't you? Lazarus was already dead three days when Jesus got there. Matter of fact, he was dead four days, and the Bible declares that when Jesus raised him from the dead, rumors went out that Lazarus was arrayed, was rosen. Right this here. That in chapter number 12, while Jesus was in Bethany, people didn't come to Bethany to see Jesus. They came to see Lazarus. I ain't got nobody here because they didn't believe that he survived. I ain't got nobody here. Somebody has not been to Apex yet. Yet, but they coming y'all not ready for that they're coming to see if we're still standing up and don't realize we rock steady I ain't got nobody here but others are leaning with it and rocking with it having done all the stand we're standing there for in the limit
Y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? The same rumor they put out about us went out about them. The only difference is today they dying from it and we living after it. Y'all not ready for that kind of stuff. Y'all don't want that kind of talk. I said they don't want that kind of talk. See, see people, see people put a rumor out about you that you can survive and they can't. I ain't got nobody here. Now they sitting someplace looking pitiful, talking about woe is me. But when it happened to me, I thought y'all were laughing and joking. Can I tell you this? People about to lose what we getting ready to maintain. Good God. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. They talking about closing down. We talking about opening up. They talking about giving up. We running for our life. They crying and we're celebrating because if God be for us, I said who? I said who can be against us? Because that is, when I think about every lie, we survive. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Come on, say with power. Say neighbor. I'm a rumor survivor. I'm going to survive every rumor. I'm going to outlive every lie. I'm going to soar through every skin. Come what may from dead and dead. got nobody here who can say because I held my peace I had enough to lyrically assassinate him but God said shut your mouth and let me fight for you tell your neighbor God's fighting for you see when God fights for you like David You'll have the victory in the bag. Even when you didn't know you was coming to a battle. Let me give you a Bible for that. David was going down to the battlefield to feed his brother's lunch. But while he was down there, a Philistine picked a fight with him. And he went down to the river and got five through smooth stones. And said, I've got the victory in the bag. I ain't got no I don't need a sword or a spear. I'm going. In the strata of the land. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, say neighbor. At the right time, God will anoint me to come out of my bag. Oh God, I can't come out my bag until it's my season to win. But when I come out my bag, I won't have to do much. I had five stones, but God gave me a one-shot deal. I whirled it, I loosed it, and God gave me the victory over it. Tell your neighbor in this season ain't gonna take much for you to win. Uh, God, it ain't gonna take much for you to win. Uh, God, it ain't gonna take much for you to win. The reality of it is, woman of God, uh, God, my enemy don't want no smoke. I ain't got nobody here. I said, they don't want no smoke. Y'all not saying they here. I said, they don't want no smoke. As a matter of fact, when the enemy saw me surrounded in smoke, he thought it was all over for me and don't realize when the smoke cleared and the dust settled, I will be the last man standing. How do I know when the wicked, even my enemy and my foe came upon me to eat of my flesh? They stumbled and fell. Tell your neighbor, if they don't leave you alone, they're going to start tripping. Let me see, see, the season that we're in, God ain't got to tell us to lift up our heads, all ye gates. Our season is, and now shall my head be lifted up. Round about my enemies. 
tell your neighbor everything that was coming against me is now under me that's why I've been praising God the way I've been praising because it's under my feet I said it's under my I said it's under right. we're out of here so I had no idea while I was wandering in the wilderness I was worrying my enemy the way I was doing I was concerned that I was going in circles, but they were concerned that I was still going. I ain't got nobody here. I, got, I was concerned that we kept passing the same rock, but they were concerned that when our heart got overwhelmed within us, he led us to the, oh God, uh, to the rock that was higher. I ain't got nobody here. I, got, I was concerned about where I was going, but they were mad I was no longer where I was. I got to tell your neighbor's neighbor, even in your wandering, you're making people nervous. I got even in your travail, you're making people upset. Even in your prayer life, you got people problematic because they know that you're going to make it. Tell your neighbor, they know, they know, they know, they know, they know, they know. Oh yeah, they know. They may not say it, but they know. Oh God. Oh God, they may not never admit it, but they knew. I ain't got nobody here. Oh God, because watch this here. Oh God, I wasn't coming through the wilderness on a praise. Oh God, because can I tell you this? Everything praising ain't got the victory. Oh God, uh, everything worshiping ain't got a, a relationship with God. Uh, but when you saw me going through, I was going through on a promise. Uh, let me tell you the difference between a promise and a prophecy. Uh, a prophecy is predicated on you doing your part. Uh, but when this poor man cried and didn't have nothing uh, to render unto the Lord, God said, I promise you. Uh, I said, Lord, don't you lie to me. Uh, but it's in the scripture where he said, uh, when I can swear by nothing greater I swore by myself touch your neighbor and say neighbor God swears you're going to survive this I said God swears you're going to make it out of it I know grandma said you better not swear but in the bible I saw God say I swear to God you're going to come through this and you're coming through with the victory every day I was in the dirt every day I was in the sand I was relying on the promise that sooner or later I was coming into a land flowing with milk and honey may not be in Raleigh may not be in Nightdale but somewhere over in the city of Apex God had a Rehoboth for us can't nobody say we still in their members can't nobody say we compete with their servants we doing alright over here we making it do what we do and we doing it all by ourselves Now, the reality of it is, overseer, people peek their head in the door, say, ain't nothing going on over there. Ain't nobody in there. And don't realize, men of God, we're building up a sound. Oh, God. I said, we're building up a sound because our next test is to take Jericho. Jericho is a fortified city that belongs to those who came against us. But how are we going to defeat Jericho? It's not by throwing the hands. It's not by starting a blog. Not by starting a rumor. But I heard that when they praise God on the seventh day, round about the seventh time, everything that was standing in our way had to fall down flat because when I lift up the name of Jesus, oh magnify the Lord with me and let us see sometimes it's okay not to be the smartest one sometimes man of God it's okay not to be the well dressed but one thing I do have, I do have how to use my weapon. <sighs> my weapon goes like this. Let God rise. Woo. 
Oh God, I wish I was in the Baptist church uh, and my enemies be scattered. Can I tell you this? Uh, some nights we were praising God two or three. Uh, some days it was seven or eight. Uh, some days it was 10 or 20. Uh, but nevertheless, when I hit the dance floor uh, and my hands lifted up uh, and my mouth went with praise, uh, God began to defeat my enemy uh, one by one. Uh, that today uh, I came to clear uh, that the rumor uh, help me win when they realize we're unstoppable we're unbeatable we won't get discouraged never be defeated nobody had the heart to come up against us nobody had the words to put out about us this is our winning season clap your hands give God a good praise Oh, the last time they heard of us, it looked like defeat. But when we pulled up in the yard, I heard the sound of victory. I didn't hear praise going forth, but I heard the prayers of the righteous making things available. Sometime, beloved, God will take you back to the fundamentals. He'll take you back to the threshing floor where you can say like David, this poor man cried. And the Lord heard me, good God, and delivered me out of all my fears. Revolution, I want to tell you this. You're getting ready to turn the world upside down. The Bible declares, beloved of God, when the kings of the different regions heard what God was doing for us, we might not be in the triad, but we're affecting the region. We might not be in the major cities, but we're affecting the regions. The kings have a problem because we keep winning. I could not die in the wilderness because I was destined to win. I could not get lost in the wandering because I was destined to win. I couldn't just be virtual because I was destined to win. Whether I have to do it all by myself, I will come out a winner paying all of these things and more so much more so much more so much more so much more Last fight, last fight, not only did it change my name, it changed my character. I refused to give up. I got wounded in the fight, but I kept on fighting. My hip was out of joint, who ever heard of that? But it didn't stop the wrestler in me because I knew that what I was fighting for was greater than me. It was for my family. It was for my destiny. It was for my posterity in the earth. Thank God 
we didn't die in night there but because we kept on fighting because we kept on wrestling I know it's all right I said it because we kept on fighting because we kept on wrestling while they're still trying to figure it out we over here working while they're waiting for clearance we already got the all clear Oh, y'all not ready for that. While they're trying to figure out if we're good or not, the man of God got confirmation today that y'all good. All right, y'all not ready for that kind of stuff. I'm trying to tell you this. Uh, this is not the season uh, to make people comfortable. Because as long as you're open, uh, people will always be uncomfortable. They want you to wait for them to open the door for you. But I heard the Lord say, Behold, I've set before thee an open door that no man can shut. No rumor, no lie, no scandal. We're unreachable. We're unstoppable. We're unbreakable. We are evolution. And we're getting ready to evolve. I don't know if y'all feel the power I feel, but God is, God is here. How? I don't have time to play nice. I don't have time to kiss tail. I don't have time to stroke egos. I'm too busy being about my father's business. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? The kingdom of sovereign violence and the violence. I gotta take it by force. Ain't got time to ask. I just gotta go in. And without fail, we will recover. Evolution doesn't just mean change. It means change and become something different. And that word empowerment means God is empowering us to not just change, but become something different. Give me Bible. I have not seen. Neither has ear heard. Neither has it entered to the hearts of men. Well, oh God, some lying prophet tried to come through and try to determine what we shall be. The lie is on him or her because it does not yet appear what we shall be. Touch your neighbor, say neighbor, God is still working on us. He's still deciding how great we're going to be. But one thing's for sure, we're going to be greater. I ain't got nobody here than what we used to be. He's still deciding how far we're going to go. Well, but we're going to go further than we've ever been before. Are you understand what I'm saying? God's getting ready to move for us. Somebody holler, God's getting ready to move for us. Come on, somebody holler, God's getting ready to move for us. God's getting ready to move for us in such a way, beloved of God, that it's going to blow your mind. Overseer Johnson, just play something softly for you, man, to God with a little charge to it. Overseer Johnson, I want to say this to you. God is with you. God is with you. Not only is God with you, he's for you. Not only is he for you, he's more than the world against you. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, God, and there's a king concerned because not only will you get ready to take their crown, you get ready to take their head. And when David slew Goliath, the battle wasn't over until he took the head off the giant. Let us be prayerful. This is not our season to gloat. It's not our season to say, I told you so. This is our season to be prayerful. Because as we see other kingdoms fold and come down, as grandma would say, there go I.
but by the grace of God. He spared us. He covered us. That when the enemy came in like a flood, he lifted up a standard against us. I want to make this public disclaimer. In the season I'm in, I'm not interested in making or renewing or strengthening old connections. God told me everything must be new. Now, I'm a firm believer. There's another demographic of people that's getting ready to walk through that door. Oh, I ain't got nobody here. In so much, we might even need an interpreter. Because some might not even understand the language of English. But they know the move of God. There's going to be times when we get in here and all we can do is just travail and holler. And God will make the language bilingual that everyone in their own language will understand the power of God upon our lives. Be encouraged, beloved. This is your season. This is your hour. This is your time. This is your turn. Let me say this to you, precious heart. Return back not to the former things. Nothing behind you worth going back to. And some things behind you is trying to catch up with you. Because you've suffered some letdowns and some setbacks that has ultimately slowed you down. You're not running as fast as you used to be. And so you're giving the enemy a chance to catch up with you. But God said, don't give in. Although your ex may want you back. Remember, they're your ex. They didn't work before. It ain't going to work now. Go beyond relationship. I'm even talking about friendships. Ex-friends, ex-associates. That's going to shock you. Even ex-family that played themselves. and You had to write them off. Because sometimes we got people who know us. And because they were close to us, anything they say about us, people would say is true because of our closeness. Oh, God. David said, I didn't experience hurt until I experienced hurt in my own house. The same one that slept in my bed, that ate at my table, that borrowed my money. I ain't got nobody here. That drove my car, ran it out of gas. Those are the ones who did me dirty. The ones who uh, got no funny business. I used to take baths with, tell secrets to, you know, rubber duckies in the tub. Come on, when you were younger, you wasn't thinking nothing crazy or dumb. Those are the ones uh, who lied. I ain't got nobody here. And you got to be very careful in the season of who you allow close to you. Jesus had 70 disciples. 12 he called by name. Because the 12 he called first. Then he had 70 that came back to him. But out of the 12, he only walked with three. And out of the three he was with, only one of them had a voice. That was Peter. John was the one who had a prayer life. And James was the one who was the observer. God, I thank you. I got to be very careful of those who are always, always got something to say. Always got advice. Always want to be in your ear. Always want to be in your business. Sometime I just want you around, but I don't want to hear from you. Sometime. I just want to go out to dinner and not talk about what I'm dealing with. Sometimes your company is enough just to shift my mindset and make me win again. Hold your hands up high. We're done. It is in Joshua chapter number five. It's an echo from a former chapter where Rahab says the same thing. We heard how God has been prospering you. We ain't got the heart to fight you. We don't want to stand in your way. We don't want to try to stop you because we know you're unstoppable. We know that you're evolving. That means every day we're becoming something different. Just when you thought you learned us, tomorrow will be something different. Just when you thought you had us, tomorrow will be in a different place. Just when you thought you had us figured out, tomorrow we'll be doing something different. God is strategizing us. Glory to God. He's renewing our spirit. He's bringing peace to our troubled mind. We will survive this. Oh yes, we will. And so Overseer Johnson, be encouraged. God is sending you an apostolic people. Some folks cannot be a part until it's already up and fully running. But God is sending your people who can build it from nothing. God is enough for them. If I come and there's no chairs, as long as God is here, I'm all right. If I come and my favorite person don't come, as long as God is here, 
I'm all right. If I come one day and there's no musicians and we have to use a track, it's all right as long as God is here. Apostolic people are prophetic people. They can see whew, in the spirit what we're still trying to build in the natural. Apostolic people are visionaries. Stepping through the door, they can see where the ministry is going and begin to sow into where we're going. Oh, God. We were here one night. I was here. Another preacher was preaching. And something happened to the organ. Begin to smoke. The Leslie. And Overseer Johnson said, wow, that's never happened before. Apostolic people would have came out of their pocket. I don't know what happened. But by the time service, the next service comes, take this and make sure everything is well. Because guess what? As long as we got a sound, we got to move. As long as we got a sound, we got the ability to draw. There are neighbors that go to church every time we have service and have not even entered the door yet. But there is an anointing that's getting ready to arrest them out of their house. Woo, God. And bring them through the door. See, what happens is, I got to say this prophetically, they're giving us time to be observed. See, we got to go through that season of people coming and just looking, but not actually having our heart. You understand what I'm saying? Some folks just want to come to see, does this look like where we left? Do we have stuff in here that came from the old? I'm telling you what stupid people think. Is he trying to be greater than what God called him to be? Now, here goes the crazy thing. God called him to be greater. So if he's trying to be greater, then he's in the will of God. I ain't got nobody here. People will try to minimize you to a place where they can control you or manipulate you. Oh, God. And so watch this here. Once the fanfare has lifted, the true people will come. Because people in the world have a greater gift of discernment than those in the church. So somebody's watching the door and saying, oh, no, those who go in there, they're not serious about God. Nothing against the church, nothing against the members, but a problem with those who are coming to spectate. Because when you're really serious about God, there's no way you can leave out the door looking the same way you did when you came in the door. When you're really serious about God, there's no way you step out to have a conversation while the word is going for. Oh, God. And so once God has weeded out the spectators, we get ready to impact the regions. I see people driving as far as an hour and a half to get here. Safe atmosphere. Pure move. Wind of God. In so much that Khadijah, if the prophet never prophesies in the atmosphere, I heard God. Oh God. If the man of God never calls my name in his preached word, I heard God. If I was only able to stay for praise and worship because I had to work in the song melody, I heard God. My voice, saith the Lord, shall perpetually speak in this place. I see leaders coming and sitting in the back not wanting to be recognized but wanting to be fed wanting to be imparted into God told me to tell you there's a general in the making by way of V.E. Johnson others have had their thousands saith the Lord but Johnson shall have his tens of thousands this was a test just to see if you would launch and because you have perfected this with excellence, I'm getting ready to thrust you out into something greater. I'm getting ready to put a greater demand on the ministry. Not necessarily more services, but more encounters. Overseer Johnson, God said, I'm about to give you the same ministry that Mark enjoyed. Where Jesus was able to move spontaneously. I'm talking about at 12 noon, you can send out a text saying Thursday night, I feel like having service on the same day and the church will respond in fullness. Not making excuses, but rearranging schedules 
because if overseer called for us that means God has a womb for us I'm talking about unscheduled unpublicized moves we didn't have time to make a flyer we didn't have time to send out a post or a status all of a sudden the camera went on and we were in the building in full number in so much that many begin to text us why didn't y'all tell us y'all were having service we would have came but because it was a spontaneous move child i had just got off work at five overseer said don't go home come straight to the church there's a miracle waiting at the seven o'clock just when I had asked for overtime, I had to go back to my supervisor and say, I'll do it another time. God is calling me. I don't know what he has for me, but I've got to be in the building. i got to make my way to Apex. I got to come all the way to Old Highway 1. Y'all not saying nothing here. Oh God, we love God. Somebody wave their victory banner and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Let's sow tonight. I know you gave a, a seed, but let's sow tonight. I'm going to lose a $100 seed in the place because I just feel celebration. Feel celebration coming. Khadijah, God's getting ready to heal your heart on so many different levels because you've been hurt on so many different levels. And I thank God that even in transition, swift transition, you stayed with your leaders. God said you can heal here. You can heal here. You will not be who they made you out to be neither will you be where they left you but I hear greater concerning your life and father said even though you lost your natural mother simultaneously God gave you a spiritual mother cling to her there are times you want to reach out but you don't want to seem needy you don't want to seem imposing you but those are the times when you need her and guess what and you're in her spirit oh God because there's a mantle that she must pass out and God said he chooses you to receive it you get ready great things get ready to happen for you and God's getting ready to send healing to your family where there was devastation there shall be healing and where there is torment there shall be peace be encouraged and God's going to move for your brother as well Dion God's going to move for him as well he weighs heavy on your heart God's going to move for him according to the things you have laid out before the Lord concerning him healing shall be his portion as well he hides behind his gift but deep down inside, he's hurting too. Hey, and there is a healing come into his life. Oh, God. Ashkataya. Let's get ready to sow, beloved. Those who are watching, amen. You're moving in the seat now. 